Tempo Storm dominating phase one, you don't see them putting up those same numbers. And a big part of it is... There's not enough points around anymore. Yeah, exactly. More teams are sharing the points between themselves. They can't just run over everyone as easily. We still see them do it from time to time. And it is always an enjoyable experience to watch. Absolutely. And it's, uh, you know, talking about the point spread, it's really made things close in the middle of the pack of the leaderboard. So with EU United specifically, I know they've made some internal changes. Uh, they've maybe changed the flow of uh, information. But uh, I think that after yesterday's performance, winning a game, that has got to feel so good. Those clutch victories can bring t a, a, a team together in ways that really nothing else can when you're especially having like yeah. a rough patch. I mean, we saw that happen to Genesis. Absolutely. They they started to get back into things last week, but it really was off of that 15 kill win that we saw that momentum increase again. And PUBG is such a mental game. You have to be confident when you take fights. And that's something that we've criticized the, I guess, the newer teams like Vanquish and Loki and Zenith for. But ooh, this is an interesting circle. You can see very few teams are already inside it just because the plane was a little bit on the eastern side. Yeah, this is going to be a, a nice start for Tempo. They did have a couple of zero-point performances yesterday. Didn't pick up as many points as we'd normally see them in the first day, but they are always the team to rebound. Uh, and that's one of their superpowers, if not the only superpowers, that Tempo, even if they lose a couple of games, they get a couple of zero points in a row, they will still then all of a sudden turn around and win. We saw that yesterday, and I likely imagine we'll see that again today. Yeah, and this is a really good circle for them, speaking of Tempo Storm, because they loot around the Gatka area, obviously. The one question is, when you loot as scattered as Tempo Storm do, that does leave you at a risk of being crashed if you don't loot up quickly. But... At this point, they're so experienced in this area. It's not some like they are not one of the teams that I would be worried about to have to loot scattered in the center of the first circle. Just uh, a smaller lead than they had yesterday, but still a pretty significant one. Lazarus obviously right behind trying to also have a good start to this day. And they've been very consistent over the last couple of weeks. Uh, as time has gone on, Lazarus has continued to tighten things up. The way they take map control is very yeah. reminiscent of the team we saw in phase number one and uh, back when they were back when they were shoot to kill at that stage. And yeah. uh, for Lazarus, it's just been a very, very nice cadence of progression, and they only get better as time has gone on. Yeah, I'm curious to see where Lazarus actually rotated into the circle. Yes, Naya, their primary loot drop, is not inside, but they are right on the edge and can make it into the circle pretty quickly. The question is, do they stay on the north side of the river that river in the circle cuts off close to if not more than a third of the playable area right now and so you want to be below it because it's likely going to go down absolutely and lazarus can even come across on the bridge hold a choke point they do have the ability to go center quite early but they'd also have to come south across the river as you just mentioned i likely won't see lazarus doing a southern rotate off their loot spot so i imagine they come across the yasnaya bridge maybe set up a little bit of a choke because they know there's going to be a lot of teams rotating north to get away from the pressure on the southwestern side or the southeastern side, sorry. Yeah, exactly. And they, they've seen to uh, have a tendency to throw Pretty Curdy out there to loot primarily. But we see Envy here. Actually, no, back on Lazarus. They are indeed going across that Yasnaya Bridge. Uncivil actually going to go in first ahead of everyone else to scout it all out. With how early they're leaving, I imagine there won't be any choke points held here. They're probably just going to try and get center, maybe around the cube spot, hang out there. That would be a good get for Lazarus this early in the game. It's always a risk taking choke points, especially when you're a position like Lazarus, who have an opportunity to go to center really early. If you're in in this in this particular circle, if you're in Ghost or Rumbler scenario where you're way off on the edge, at that point you can maybe consider trying to fight early because you're, you don't have priority on center. But for these guys, they can get center. Center is super important. Center is super powerful, and it's not the risk that holding a choke would give you. Interesting to see teams use these little leapfrog tactics, and this is something you can kind of pick up for your own games at home when you're playing these squads or duos or whatever. I love the way that one guy will stop, check an area out, scout for the next guy as he passes, and that allows just constant forward movement into the circle, which is why Lazarus is continuing to move center. They haven't made a mad dash yet, but they're being very cautious, which is kind of the MO for this team, but Maluk seems to have been spotted. He's got some pressure coming his way. Yeah, actually Genesis, of course, one of, if not still the fastest team in the oh. lobby. Gets into a bit of a trouble as the Sonics come crashing in onto Profi. Oh, unlucky. I don't think Profi realized just how close these players were to him. And uh, the survival time for Profi has been a sore point for this squad. And that's going to be him first out of the game five minutes in. That's shocking. I was, as I was just saying, Genesis are known as being one of the fastest teams. But we only just now see K-Mind arriving. He was still in Pachinki doing, I don't know at this point. Probably, so the, loop, actually, probably the loop mule, I would have guessed. Yeah, but... 
that comes that comes across as being a little bit of sloppiness on Genesis's end. This is not the thing that I expected them to get punished on. <laughs> to be fair, yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of crazy to say that it's a, at a five minute rotate out of Pachinki that they're anything but slow. But I mean, those are the metrics. Absolutely, no, they're right. You're they're you know typically around four minutes, but just a slower start this time around. It cost them a player, but they do have three strong center circle. They've got a decent spot to hold on to, but they really want to have Profi alive there. Wild card, they're looking uh, a little bit further south. They, I think they've got Endemic in their sights. Yeah, these guys, they looted um, up in Severny. They stayed on the north side of the river. It's not a bad play. They're doing a little bit slower version of what you called out as the, the leapfrog. Yep. Of just scouting ahead of them, moving maybe 100, 200 meters, scouting out again. And they did catch Endemic, I believe, holding the compounds in the north side of Georgia Pole. And so, you know, they're just scouting out to the east of them. They don't want to take this fight early game if they don't have to. We've seen Wildcard be quite successful if they can get into the late game four up, and that seems to be their game plan this time around. Cube is open, yep. and they may be, may be gunning straight for it. Lazarus did not uh, decide to keep driving. Looks like Kickstarter is going to okay. torch the vehicle, and <laughs> that's that, I guess, uh, as the rest of Wildcard will come down to where he's at. Uh, but yeah, Lazarus decided to kind of stick around yellows outside of Yasnaya over the bridge. So they're going to be by themselves, as many other teams have decided for the long southern rotates. Wildcard, they didn't want to take cube. They wanted to go ahead and go south of the river just because the, the likelihood of the circle being south is quite high in this one. But Kickstart loses the vehicle. I think he's going to need to be picked yeah. up by Adam. I don't know. Maybe he just missed the exit. <laughs> <laughs> Something to I, I don't know. You see Wolf from Demic also going down as well. Luckily, Wildcard able to get across and take a couple of shots at that rotation. Kickstart is picked up by Adam. They stay as four up. And this is a very powerful compound if it's in the end game. We haven't seen it happen yet, but Wildcard are setting up here just in case. I think they would have liked to keep that extra vehicle, um, but yeah. uh, it is what it is. Genesis climbing the mountain, nerf using all 12 torque points. What What is it? Torque? Four feet pounds regardless he's up the mountain now and uh, this is gonna be a nice vantage point uh, for nerf and Genesis to kind of keep an eye on what's happening around the northern side yeah he's going up here just because we saw the sight lines between Genesis is building and Sonic's crash that stole Profi and that compound from them weren't that great and so he's going up there to try and get some good information and the early game is when you can get information the safest we'll see if anyone tries to contest that position but Tempo Storm, we've seen them rotate around. E United have arrived in this position not too far away from where we saw Riot Squad arrive just a couple of moments ago. And everyone is really trying to gun for center. SSG is going pretty aggro to the to the mountain yeah. top as well. I think they did take a couple of shots from Genesis. Hetrar plus one coming in from behind. Taylor is watching the mountainside as well. This is an interesting hold for E United. They're doing a 2-2 two -two split on the southern side. Most teams expecting Cameron that this thing is going to stay south. Yeah, it's but. We see a couple people positioning themselves up north just in case, because if it does hard shift up, you want to be able to be the first ones to get across the river. Lazarus inching their way ever closer to the cube spot. They have been slow, but they have no one in front of them. So now it's going to be Pat Caps. He's found a United. Couple of shots being traded. They're in a split of their own. 2-2 two -two for Envy as well as a United. Couple of shots, no full commitment just yet, especially because we have five seconds until the next cir circle reveals itself, and you don't want to be in a fight when that happens. And where is it going to shift? And we're going to go ooh, all the way straight south. Uh, almost a hard shift, but exactly where everyone expected it to go at this stage. Maybe not as hard as uh, you would have expected, but now it's going to be Lazarus trying to make their way across. V uh, sorry, excuse me, Vanquish is going to be coming across the Georgia Pole Bridge, but Rumblers, they're the farthest from the safe zone, and they're likely going to have to reverse and go all the way back down south. That was not, that's not a good st start for Sonics, and Dietrich taking some shots at, shots at low key. We're trying to find somewhere to go. Doesn't actually get a single knock, which is surprising, but there it is. Sharp Shot's going to find it, but Protégé also on to Dietrich. Nice shots there, landing. Smoke comes out, trying to prevent the finish, but Dietrich will be finished off. Sharky now taking some shots at Genesis. They've come south and is already a big cluster in the Gatka fields. Sharky taking some damage from E-United. And uh, this is going to be Tempo all of a sudden having a lot of control. They've been here the longest, and now they have a nice setup to pressure teams from their multiple compounds. Yeah, you can see the shots con continuing to come out onto player one's location. And it is something that we failed to mention about this circle. It did shift over to the uh, most likely area of where it's going to end, but that's a lot of fields here. And so teams are rushing to find a compound, find a position. It's starting to run a little thin. 
a couple of teams are getting on top of the mountain a couple of teams are trying to fight over these gatka compounds and but it's just shots hailing through all of these different positions you can see tempos 2-2 two, two. they've got some great control some great compounds and they'll have excellent vision to go along with it ssg does take the mountain but you can see rumblers they've had to basically completely reverse their trajectory they'll likely be in the blue for the the uh, majority of this phase as uh i wonder now how many kills tempo could potentially rack up if this thing centers on them once again this is the this is one of those tempo games that could yeah. all of a sudden be a 12 kill victory yes that being said they are most successful in my experience of being on the edge and so perhaps the kills won't be as plentiful for them this time around but there if there's any team that can win from multiple win conditions it's going to be them lazarus able to make their way across the river it was a bit slow for them able to avoid wild card though and they're going to be pushing in through ruins as they continue on scouting out right now the problem is from this position scouting is not that easy yeah it's difficult to drive cam you nailed it as they come out of the ruins area they'll be kind of blind to the hills uh, the new Erangel map will also make this area very interesting in future competitive games uh, but for now, Lazarus just has to contend with potentially SSG spotting them. They do have the Sonics in their immediate path. Likely going to be an edge play uh, game for Lazarus as it's going to be difficult now to push really anywhere. Nerf here, sneaking up through, well, the tunnels here, trying to get up close to Envy. I don't know if Envy has spotted him out, and he's taking it slow. You can see the rest of his team holding down the, uh, I guess, the hole up north, making sure that they're not crashed by E United or Riot Squad or anyone else in that area. But if he, if Nerf can find a pick here, this would be a good pickup because Genesis's location right now is certainly not a powerful one in the current moment. I, I kind of, I'm okay with their positioning right now just from a, they can't really be active from here. They'll be yeah. mostly info gathering, maybe being able to attack or third party crashing teams. It'll be difficult to dislodge Envy. Now they have Moody potentially off by himself. They could get a kill there. That would really hurt Envy, but it'll be difficult then to prevent Envy rotating over and really doing damage as they're stuck on the chopsticks. We'll see another circle shift coming in, and this one's going to send her right on to Tempo, as Ooh. well as SSG. Going to put some pressure again on the western side where Endemic is, and uh, for now it's just kind of a low and slow circle as I, aside from Riot Squad, who's in rotation early into Gatka, most compounds are taken, and there is some room for teams to come in on the northern side as well. Yeah, I think Gatka actually split off and held the compound southwest of Gatka in a 2-2 just in case it centered up again, but it shifted up, and they grouped up immediately. I'd like to see Tempo Storm group up. They look like they're going to do just that. I see Zamp in his vehicle. They might even be considering it, but it hasn't happened yet. Envy as well also staying spread out, but that's because they're on the edge, and they know that the south is quite empty, so they have the flexibility. They have the, uh, the privilege to be able to do this. Pride, you can see on the minimap, coming up to join Moody. And this is when Nerf's position could really bite them. But we'll see what happens over here with Loki. Fignato sends a couple of shots towards Patron. Lands a few, him and his teammates. But Zenith's still having to push in. They're actually rotating away from the circle just to avoid this pressure. Might be coming in closer towards the hospital area, but, well, it's going to be with three because Patron does go down. Yeah, there was a lot of damage coming in. We can see now Vanquish has found a wild card. They were coming on the northern side of the Georgia Pole Mountain, and now it's going to be SSG with the third party potential. So for Vanquish, they can do damage, but wild card is just going to be sitting here likely not able to move. They're going to have some decent cover with their vehicles. I know they only had two when they left their previous compound, which might make rotation as a team very dangerous as, you know, stacking players up into one car can be a disaster. Speaking of which, we've got Lamp a lot and Aguila taking a lot of damage, and they're uh, just going to be able to skirt out of the way of Endemic come to a stop, and this is going to be their spot for this portion of the zone. I'm a little confused on where they came from. I thought they were already around this area of the map, but nonetheless, it would arrive with three up. You can see Finna is down for Vanquish, but Reno here is trying to trade back onto Wildcard. This is, uh, it's gonna be an interesting fight because they can stay quite isolated at this moment, but it's for a position that is not the strongest. Petrar getting a little bit further down the hillside. I imagine SSG is going to want to get as many kills as they can, considering their position on the leaderboard. So Hetrar and the boys likely going to be a little bit more aggro as we get through the weekend. Pent is going to get taken down by Tetra. And now it's going to be H-Win spawning out pat caps, and that's going to bring some, uh, some pressure towards chopsticks, as now all of Envy are aware that they have some friends. 
but are they aware of nerf? That's still the big question. H wins going a little loud, trying to be a little bit of a distraction. And if Envy just beeline onto him, tunnel vision onto that sole player, nerf could still ruin their chances, but he's being surrounded and pad caps already in inside the tunnels. He's aware that something can happen. Wildcard do go out in 16th off of SSG, but right now it's still going to be waiting. If Envy and Genesis, they're going to fight soon. The question is, Who's going to come out on top? This is where they really need Profi alive, unfortunately, as this is a complicated area to fight in and around. We're going to see another circle shift come in, and this is where things get decided. We're going to hit the crunch mark, and yes, Tempo Storm will retain their 2-2 split. I wonder now, Cam, if they're going to hold on to this, as there's very few compounds. There will be crashing happening, especially if you're Lazarus. There's so many teams on the southern side that have now nowhere to go. Yeah, it's going to be a risk, and they have a crate to pick up in the center as well, but over here in Space Station Gaming, already three kills. Still eyeing in on Vanquish. They know there's one more team, and they probably heard Zenith arrive, but right now, Envy, they don't want to have to push through North because of the shift is not in their favor, and so they hop in their vehicles, drive away, and Genesis are sitting there with still nothing to gain for that. Be united might get the benefit of a free compound as Tempo just rotated to rejoin, and yes, indeed, United are going to get a free compound Tempo was 2-2, Envy's in rotation, but here they are, and this is United picking up an almost perfectly timed arrival as Tempo just rejoined to their uh, to their east. A little bit of a struggle getting inside that building, but actually that car blocking the entrance could work out if they get crashed by another spot, and I think that's what the point is. Kendo throws out a Molotov, tries to flush out the remaining oh. low-key player. I think it went just a little bit oh, too yeah. far. Oh, just short. I love the Molly, but they're going to find him anyway, man. So there goes uh, there goes Lobes. h one's going to take down McCoy elsewhere, as now Ghost and Genesis have to make their way north. Yeah, Ghost arriving here, coming in from the southeast. It's generally what to expect from them. And Genesis, I don't know if they intended to stay here. They may have just been trapped by that standoff against Envy, but now they're going to be fighting their way through. Should be a free pickup for McCoy they if they can deploy fight. the smoke. They want to fight this, Cam. I think Genesis wants these kills because going north on foot is going to be very difficult. Elsewhere, we've got the Rumblers throwing out some smokes and some utility trying to get out of their field. They've got Sonics there. Civil is down. I think he might have been out as well. So that's going to be Lazarus losing one, but they did pick up one player as well. So I didn't see. Yes, it is on Civil going down and out. And they're going to be pressing now towards Sonics. This is going to be a situation on the edge of the zone. They have to displace them. A couple of smokes thrown out, not only to mask their, uh, I guess, approach, but also okay. for those nades to come in. None the wiser. Genesis arrive on the riot squad, but this is a rough bomb in. A nice nade comes out. H-Win is already downed. Yeah, he's probably going to be finished by that grenade as well. VZ there to support. And now it's going to be up to K-Mine and Nerf to try and clean this up or try and get any hold at all. But Riot Squad is just swarming, looking for any information. Nerf on the interior. He's already lost his helmet. Looks like K-Mine is going for the res. This is going to be important to, to clutch this out. And now h wins back up, going for the Insta-Med. Riot Squad not being too uh, too active here. Mystery's off, and here comes Leda, the fragger. He wants more. He's getting right up in the business. Nerf trying to protect, but there's just no vision. Smoke's already deployed. I don't know if that was defensive or offensive, but it actually is going to be helping Genesis out for now. Leda pops inside the building, but with the revive onto h win as you called out being as crucial as it is, it's going to make the push by Riot Squad a little difficult, especially because Mystery, you can see on the minimap, is off on a side flank. It's only going to be a 3v3 fight, and Genesis are perfectly fine waiting for Riot Squad to be the ones to push in. The onus is now onto Riot Squad to be active. H-Win and the rest of Genesis just need to hold. And you can tell now Riot Squad wants to displace them. And if Genesis can execute, this would be points as well as a tiny sliver of real estate in the new zone. Look at the crossfire that Genesis have set up, but for 12 uh, seconds until yes, the zone changes again. Exactly. At what point? Riot Squad, <laughs> they make the call. It is not worthwhile to yeah. actually push into that. They see how dangerous it is. And so they're just going to fall away and try and group up on Mystery's position. Oh. Elsewhere, Lazarus, they've taken a lot of wow. heat. And it's actually going to be them going out in 14th place. Not very many kills, but the Sonics and Ghost are still in the midst of it right now. McCoy, I think, is the only one remaining, and he's going to get torn down as well. 13th place for Ghost, not the start they wanted. Sonics have been picking up some kills, but now eyes turn their way as the Rumblers have taken the top side of the mountain. And now Genesis has to move as well. We're going to see Zenith go down, and this is just a symptom of there's nowhere to go. Envy's picked up a couple of kills, uh, but it has cost them a lot as uh, Pat Caps is still down. Pride and Intero have to make something happen. SSG, they lost a couple of players at some point, which is surprising considering they haven't moved too far. 
It looks like Hetroar and Valiate are down. There's only Baja and Jsenk. I love this by Riot Squad. Genesis may not be aware that Riot Squad left because they did so on foot, didn't have the audio cue of the vehicles, and so they're only just now slowly peeking their way out. But they look at move. this trap sent by Riot Squad. VZ is there just to bite them once the rest of Riot, Riot Squad go loud because they know Genesis need to push through them to get into the circle, especially while they move this late. And you can see in the kill feed, Riot Squad taking it to Genesis. Nerf already down and out. H Win taking lots of damage from the zone. He has to med. Looks like it's going to be a little too short. He's going to go down to the zone. And Genesis looks like they will likely be eliminated by whoever is left on the edge of the zone. K Mine trying to get something out of this round as they have zero kills. And Genesis is not going to start this day very well. No, K-Mine's not going to survive for too much longer, and it was the lack of information that ended up slowing their game down to a morbid halt. Riot Squad still able to push and still keep four up. They're not in the circle themselves, though, and they're waiting to finish off the remaining Genesis player. But look, four up in the late game. This is what we like to see from Riot Squad. Yes, and it's crazy to think that 11 teams up, 33 alive. We are already in the late game at the 21 minute mark, but they do have four up and they've got a couple of kills. Riot Squad, this has been kind of the question of will they be able to make something happen? But they have United right next to them as well. So they'll be using the low side of the ridge to move. K-Mine does go down to the zone, 11th place there. So no points for Genesis in game number one on today. And once K-Mine went down, Riot Squad immediately 180'd on the move. Smokes have been deployed. VZ moved ahead. They have this ridge to hide from EU United and Tempo Storm, but that space is running out, and I don't even think they're in the circle just yet, but neither is EU United. So EU United are going to be knowing that Riot Squad creeping up onto this position, and you can see them immediately moving. VZ's got to reload his gun before someone starts shooting at him. It's going to be sharp shot. Nice shots there, but they will trade. So uh, Protégé stepping up. VZ likely lost. May oh, no, they're going to go for the res. Mystery's going back for it. Interesting to see. Leda's pushing further and further into the foreground. And here's SSG as they go out. 10th place, eliminated by Vanquish. Don't see exactly how many kills they had, but they were fighting on the top of that hill. But Vanquish able to scale up it. Quite wounded themselves, this but I think happen. if they can get the revive. But yeah, Leda's rushing for it. May not have been realized. He's spraying through the smoke. Gets a little bit of damage, but no knock just yet. This is really nice. I like the position here from Leda. Going to sneak up and get one at a sharp shot with the flush. One point there. Three kills total. Another wide open, but he's going to get immediately taken down. Maluk's there. He's get two for one, actually. And that spray comes all the way through as now it's Mystery and VZ left standing. A little bit over aggressive on Riot Squad, you have to wonder, because the two remaining Riot Squad players are not in a position to capitalize on that knock onto Sharp Shot. Three still remaining for Tempo Storm, but VZ is up here on the compound. Nice aggression from VZ, liking the plays, but now Mystery is taking all the attention, and he's got no trade ability. Now it's going to be VZ with no helmet and very few meds. He's going to probably stick a couple of smokes for his teammate that's been left behind and this is some nice team play but the circle again closing forcing everyone north this is actually slow tempo down enough that it might make their entry to the zone hard as well it has i like the smoke wall deployed by riot squad tempo storm are rotating away but right here the fight is still happening on the top of the mountain vanquish able to heal a little bit but they're surrounded by all these different teams they really need to worry about their angles of attack to make sure they can take one-on-one -on -one fights, try and limit the third-party possibilities, but EU United able to scale up successfully, still four alive, and they're getting up in close quarters to Vanquish. Yeah, this is going to be a pivotal fight for this zone as third-party potentials there with the Rumblers. It's going to have to be decisive as this game will be finishing around the mountain, and that makes things very difficult as there's not a lot of places to hide, and it's all rock face and close quarters combat. There's Maluk. He's got the line on the Sonics, the wide-open AK spray, hard to hit, but he does do a lot of damage to Tony V. Tickleton there. He's going to throw a perfectly placed grenade. That's actually a flashbang. Maluk is certainly blind as uh, he's... Oh, maybe not. Looks like he's okay, but Tickleton there still on the flank. He's got a wide open. He's got to step up, do something, but it's hard with, uh, with no information there. Maluk still pressuring with the AK at distance. More shots landing. Surprised to see Tickleton not do anything here. He's got to get up. Oh, he's got that suppressed scar. Can't get the shots to land. Now you know he's there. Maluk does go down, and Sonics look like they have the upper hand. Zampa needs to push forward and do something to allow Sharky to perhaps get the revive on Maluk, but that might even be too late. Tickleton nice. has the shots. It's going to be him taking down Sharky. But Zampa is still alive on the flank. He is going to get taken down. Tempo Storm go out in eighth place. Sonic still holding the edge, but right on the doorstep is Riot Squad. This is now becoming a game of grenades as United going for a res. Taylor is down. Stab 
in the foreground, trying to stick a couple of either weapon switches, maybe some painkillers or boosts, trying to get whatever advantage he can as Vanquish is getting eviscerated from behind. Fozu goes down to low HD. Meanwhile, it's Pride and Interrogate on the low ground. Difficult to climb, but they could potentially pick up a couple of kill steals. They have already got six points in the tank. Well, oh, but the crossfire, the angle found by Vanquish is going to be man. too much for Envy. They go out in seven, but as you mentioned, a good number of kills. But United, are they able to stabilize themselves, able to stabilize their game? But look at the Rumblers. They're up. They want to steal some of these points. Only four for them, but they are able to find a crate. You can see Los already rocking the level threes. United wants to get any advantage. They know there's one player down and they're going to cancel the res. That's going to be a nice uh, turn of events there for them. Another spray from Balefrost. Perfect position here from him. Whips out the scope. More sprays coming. There's lots of points on the table. He wants all of them. Los HD, a perfect grenade placement. And now Stab is going to try and salvage this round. I was wondering where Microfry was. He was way off on the flank and he's only just now arriving and still not able to finish those kills that were down. One of the Oh, but a good follow-up nade by Los is going to be enough to finish off and damage EU United tremendously. I believe it's only one remaining for EU United. It's just Stab, and he's got to fall away. And meanwhile, Riot Squad still in this three kills, top five placement. VZ trying to get something to happen. He's going to go for a flush the pan, and he runs out of ammo as well. He's going to have to go after Wooly. Wooly not stepping up to protect the res. And he's a little inactive. Wooly's going to get down as well. Another point, and now it's just Tiggleton. It's VZ and Tiggleton going at it, and it looks like VZ is going to get the upper hand. They eliminate Sonics. The pressure from the Rumblers forced Tiggleton down into an unfortunate angle where he gets finished off, and VZ might still be able to get the revive now that everyone on top of this mountain is distracted. Rumblers, two remaining, surrounded by two solos, and Stab is going aggressive, knowing that Lamplot has already engaged the opposition. This is really nice. Stab is going to get the upper hand, and all of a sudden, Rumblers feeling kind of cyber bullied. Microfry is going to go down, and the quick flush. And now Stab has got two players he needs to solo to be king of the hill. He's not overpeaking Stab. He knows that he's in an off angle. He knows he's in an upset position. He doesn't have priority, but he can ruin someone else's game easily and steal it back into his favor once the opportunity reveals itself. You see Riot Squad in the distance. They are alone, but there is very little cover down on the low ground, but they are closer to center. Beautiful shot here from the observing team. Lamp a lot still. One kill. Looking for more. He's got placement points in the tank. And we're going to see another small circle shift. We're basically staying right where we've been playing this entire game on the slopes of the George Pole Mountain. This is really good for Riot Squad. I don't know if they'll be able to get an, a lot of kills in this end game, but they can control the game and get those final placement points because whoever wins this top of the mountain fight are going to have to run downhill directly into the crossfire that Riot Squad are setting up. VZ swinging a little far to the left side, perhaps trying to find an unexpected angle, but Stab also finds Lampelot peeking over. Can't find the headshot, but does push him away. That's going to give VZ some good audio information as well. Difficult to see in this area. So VZ and Mystery, they're just going to take center control. This is a smart play from this team. As now Stab still looking for more. Five kills for United. Stab one. And uh, this has been well played by them. A uh, nice movement through the map so far. I think it's going to be a bit of a waiting game here, Cam. Yeah. No team wants to peek. The information is very lacking, I believe, on a lot of these players. And especially when they're in a solo position, it can be quite frightening. Waldo's just holding an angle right now, waiting for Lamp a lot to re-peek. But Lamp's the only one inside the circle, at least between those two. Stab doing the same thing as well, just waiting for someone to move, someone to give it away. It's just going to be, a, like I said, a waiting game, but to be fair, Waldo has to move. Lampelot and Stab have both taken position in the zone, and once the Waldo situation works itself out, it's going to be probably a mad dash for Stab to get into a nice position to, chat, to catch rather Lampelot. Here comes Lampelot re-peeking, and there is Waldo spotting him, nothing landing there. Waldo getting aggro. Here comes Molly over the top. And the zone is there. And it looks like Lampelot's got him. It's going to be actually the zone taking Waldo down. And there goes Lampelot. He's got to get down the hill quickly and into the zone and find some cover. He knows Stab is still over there. And he's going to be looking for VZ first. Maybe spots a little bit of movement. Nothing there. All right, Squad aren't peeking. Well, they are now. VZ finds an angle momentarily. It looked like Stab able to make his way forward, but now proning again, waiting for someone else to make the first move. You saw him try and third party the fight between player one and Rumblers, and he's going to wait to do it again between player one and Riot Squad. But uh, th just the fact that they're the only one with an actual teammate left, Riot Squad have a huge advantage right now. The center is right between the two remaining players. Great control. Mystery unleashes on Lamp a lot, and really Riot Squad feel like they should likely win this game as Stab 
and Lampalot have to come downhill out of cover into the waiting arms of both VZ and Mystery. And now Stab looking for placement. He's going to get aggro. He's looking for Lampalot. Steps over, spots him. Can't get any shots to land. Looking for more. Going to get real aggro. Steps up into Lampalot. He had to do it. And now 2v1 for Lampalot. Can he do it? Still third place for United is a good... Probably not, to be 100% oh. honest. <laughs> it's well, going to be very hard. It's going to be incredibly difficult, especially now that Riot Squad have spotted him out. Lampalot, we don't know if he's aware of exactly where VZ is. If he knows where the crossfire is, he does have a level 3 helmet, but is also quite damaged at this time. He's using the smoke. He's swinging around the side. Just a matter of time. Looking for the shots. Oh, that's going to be hard. He does get a couple down, but VZ cleans it up. Riot Squad taking game number one. Seven kills. It was a good run for them in the end. It was a little slow start for them, given their center position, but them managing the field area of the Gatka part of Erangel is not in the wheelhouse, or at least one that I would give it to them by default. And the way that they managed to push up north through a United, through Tempo Storm, has got to be commended and a very good start for the day for a team that was almost non-existent